Hey everybody, this is Paul Dosky, and I am the host of Everything Horror. Um, I just wanted to do a quick introduction here about what the podcast is going to be about, along with my lovely girlfriend, who is also going to participate in helping me with the podcast as well, which she will introduce herself to let you guys know what also you're going to expect. Uh, hi everybody, I'm Tessa Baker. Um, we're going to be talking about various different elements of horror and the reasons why we like them and um, our everything down to our favorite movies, to our favorite games and figurines. Even if you have like if we have like a favorite uh, horror character that turned into like a toy or like the pop figures or whatever, why we love to collect them kind of thing. So yeah, that's pretty much a little bit of a taste of what we're going to be talking about. So let's get down to it. Um, so how did we get into horror? Um, I don't know if you would like to start off, Tessa, or if you would like me to, it's up to you. Um, I was introduced to the horror genre at a very young age. Um, uh, movies like uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, Child's Play were introduced into my childhood, and um, where I'll, where most kids would be afraid of that sort of thing, I actually enjoyed it. Um, was kind of intrigued by the whole thing. Um, so. I guess my way of being introduced into horror was at a young age, and it just carried on from there on. So, all right, well, mine would have to be, well, first we're to say that there is an age difference between me and her, and she is actually older than me by two years, so she might know something a little bit more than me, because that two-year difference could be... Because she saw something more than me or whatever. But anyway, so I got first introduced to horror by none other than the classic. And I want to say this, um, that it is it is one of my favorites. But one of the scenes that really gets me going. Which somebody can correct me too if you are listening to this. But it's got to be Bram Stoker Dracula. The scene where I want to say the girl is on the table and there's also a werewolf with the vampire thing going on. But as time goes on, I actually really got into Tale from the Crypt, which was a TV series. One of my favorites alongside Tale from the Dark Side. Oh, also favorites of mine. They're both really good series. Yeah, I mean, it was different kind of thing. Like, we didn't really see that type of stuff on TV Besides just, like, what they could do and what they can't do because it is television. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, as um, time went on, I got into pretty much, like, what Tessa was saying. But uh, Nightmare, Jason, Child Play, Halloween, John Carpenter's Halloween, which I know one of the times we'll just do an uh, episode based off of our favorite shows or movies. And, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Yeah, and Stephen King's films are really good, too, like It and Pet Cemetery. one and two. Those weren't bad. Those are good classic yeah. ones, and we can't and forget The Shining. Rose Red and The Shining. Rose Red and The Shining, yeah, yeah. the really good ones. Um, I know Shining isn't Stephen King, but you get the point of what we're trying to say, I hope. Um, let's see. What What are some of our favorite films, I guess, or... Well, before we go into the favorites, I guess, let's talk about games. Um, I honestly don't even remember my first horror game, to be honest. I, uh, oh boy, do you even remember what your first horror game was? Uh, I would have to say that mine were the Resident Evils, actually. Oh, yeah. I don't know if that was my first, though. Yeah, Resident Evils were definitely my first experience of the horror genre and video gaming. Um, one in particular I found myself playing over and over again was um, Resident Evil Code Veronica X. Um, and that's where um, Claire Redfield uh, gets taken to this, um, what was it, I think it was a Russian, a Russian, like, 
encampment base, like where they experiment on people and. We're talking Code Veronica. Oh man! Yeah. Uh, to be yeah, hundred... that's where I first saw the tyrant. What? Well, what well, we're really interested in that you bring up Code Veronica X is Code Veronica X actually bored the hell out of me. I finished it, but it was I don't know. It just didn't really catch my attention. But um, my one of my favorite Resident Evils at the time was Resident Evil Two with Leon. And uh, I'm trying to remember who else. I, knew, I remember it was a two-disc game because one was Leon and one was, um, I want to say Jill. Yeah, I believe it was Jill. I, I believe it was Jill. So it was actually really cool that you could choose between Leon or Jill. But I always went with Leon because to me, Leon was a smart-ass guy who just pretty much just had an answer and a really pissed-off comeback for something. He pretty much went by his own rules, really. He went by his own rules, but he also just had that, like, snarky attitude, like... He was cocky. With Chris. Yeah, he yeah, was cocky. He was the cocky guy, and that's what I liked about him. He was, he's was he been one of my favorite Red and Evil. Um, Silent Hill was also another one that I really enjoyed. Um, I haven't gotten a chance to play through all of them, but I do remember... That Silent Hill was definitely on my list of horror video games that I did experience. Um, I actually remember when I first got introduced to Silent Hill. It was actually Silent Hill 2, and it was GameStop, back when you used to be able to uh, play the game before you bought them. And I remember playing like a good hour on Silent Hill 2 before I said, yeah, yeah, I'm going to purchase this. But... Um, sorry about that, that was my phone. Uh, anyway, uh, I never actually got to play the original one until PS3. Right when PS3 decided, I mean, PlayStation decided that they were going to bring it as a PlayStation 1 classic onto the, uh, PSN store. Um, from there, which I know I'm going to probably get like harsh on this one but I actually never played Silent Hill 3 until the remastered edition for PS3 so why would you get harsh on I haven't even played through all of them well because it's look how long Silent Hill 3 been and Silent Hill 3 in my opinion is so fucked up like it is so disturbing especially when you're in the hospital and then out of nowhere, you you just hear this phone ring, and the phone is inside the locker, and you get this creepy person on the other line saying, "Happy birthday to you." Because that's not creepy or anything. Yeah, cause, yeah, that's not. <laughs> well, here's the creepy thing: why is there a phone working in a locker, and yet? Like, after the sequence, I don't even think the phone's in the locker anymore. It's just like, okay, like, what the fuck just happened? Um, I did play a little bit. I never actually beat it, but I did play uh, mm -hmm. Silent Hill, The Room. And, um... That was a weird game, especially when you get locked in your own fucking apartment, and then there's a goddamn hole in the wall in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. The enemies in that kind of pissed me off, because they never died. They just got, I'm going to say, knocked out, and then they would just rise back from the dead and come back at you. So I kind of just said, fuck that. <laughs> um... I actually had another buddy, which hopefully I can bring on the podcast sometime in the future. But anyway, me and him, we actually got to the p point where if we had a Silent Hill game, we would not play it until me and him were together. Because we wanted to um, take turns and experience it ourselves because we liked the whole puzzle idea. And like if, we couldn't, if one of us couldn't figure out a certain part, then we would hand off the controller to whoever and... They w would try to go for it, and that's about it. Um, Shattered Memories came out, which, that was for Wii and PlayStation 2. Unfortunately, I never got a chance to play it. I, 
um, do have a Wii and PlayStation 2 at the time, but I could never find it. But I did do some research on it, and it sounded really interesting. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, Silent Hill Shattered Memories. I've heard of it, yes. I, I haven't gotten a chance to play it, but I have heard of it. And I saw the uh, cover artwork for it. Yeah, with the girl on the swing set, Frozen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how about you, though? Like, what, what, what type of Silent Hill games did you play? Um... I maybe got to play the first two, and then after that, um, I haven't really gotten a chance to finish playing the rest, but, um... Did you ever beat number two for Silent Hill? I, I can't even remember if I did or not, to be honest, um, but changing up gears a little bit, um... There are some horror games where I have been known to jump due to the jump scares. Um, one of those in which my amazing boyfriend introduced me to was Until Dawn. Um, I watched him play a little bit of that myself and then I played it and um, I didn't know what to think of it because you didn't know what was going on at what the time. was going on at the time and what you were being chased by and you know and then come to find out there's multiple elements going on one in which the actual real danger is a wendigo i would be careful for people who haven't played it i mean I'm, because it is only a to the playstation but yeah um just be careful of how you uh say things i guess you don't want to give too much away but, anyway, Wendigos, yes. Um, do you know what Wendigos are? From what the game had portrayed them as, it were people that were once human that ingested human flesh... And became these monsters by, like, some sort of, a uh... Um, Wendigos are, um, actually portrayed in Native American mythology as the monsters, I guess, of their, their culture, more or less. And Wendigos, um were said to be once human people who were turned by eating other another human theory. beings. Yeah. Um, but on another note, I really haven't gotten into horror games as much as I'm into horror films. Um, I'm actually starting to get more into horror genre video games. Um, I actually find that I actually like playing them, but... Most of my experience comes from watching um, horror films. And like Paul said, Bram Stoker's Dracula was a really good one. Um, he had talked about the part where um, Dracula um, subdued Lucy and lured her into the garden and was, you know, feeding on her while she, he was, had her stretched out on a stone bench. And Mina discovered them. And one of the things that stuck out in my mind about that part was when Dracula saw that Mina had seen what was going on, he goes, no, don't, you do not see me. Um, Dracula, Bram Stoker's Dracula has always been a top favorite film of mine. I absolutely love it for various different elements the the darkness, the beauty of it, the the love story that's entangled in it, um, the fact that um, a love like Dracula's and um, his yeah. his betrothed, which is reborn as Mina, is uh, able to withstand time, and I thought it was I thought it was beautiful. Um, it's one of the reasons why I love it so much. Um, The Shining was also a very good film. We actually watched that the other night 
we were feeling a little nostalgic. Um, we were going through and uh, finding ourselves quoting various parts of the movies, like the um, infamous Red Rum. Red Rum. Red Rum. Red Rum. And then the whole, um... Uh... Here's Johnny. Not that, but... Not just that, but, uh... What he fucking wrote on, like... I don't know, what would it say, like... 300 pages? Oh! All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Yes. Yeah. And he essentially wrote this into, like, a whole, like, format that so it looked like a book. But it was the same Same phrasing over over and and over. over. But, Um, yes, all the pages pretty much got formatted formatted as a book. Um, So, since you said you are into more movies and games, then what would you classify as one of your favorite besides, like... Bram Stoker, Dracula. What about anything else? Like John Carpenter's uh, The Thing? I, or like what? I do like John Carpenter's work. Um, I liked his work with The Thing. I thought that was pretty brilliant. Um, having I'm, this alien creature frozen on Earth and have these humans find it and uh, presume it an artifact and the thing melts out of the ice, comes to life, and it takes over... Uh, copies the human host and um, except for various things like they can't it can't copy like fillings or piercings or anything like that anything that isn't um, organic now the other night or about a week or so ago I remember mentioning the remake which if I remember right you said you never seen it before yeah which we watched it yeah. And in comparison between the remake and the original, I would still go with the original. I Me like too. the original far better. But the remake did do some its clever purpose. Yeah. It did do its purpose as a remake or yeah, remake. I mean it they they didn't kill it like I'm not even gonna go into it full detail, but fucking a good example would be like John Carpenter's Halloween to Rob Zombie's Halloween. Oh boy, get let's not get Paul started on that. Oh God, Rob Zombie's rendition of Halloween to John Carpenter's Halloween. Oh boy. Um. But yeah, so I mean, what 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 about you? What what do you think we should mention? What we haven't talked about yet? Um. Well, um. We were talking about John Carpenter films. Um, I actually like John Carpenter's vampire movies, like John Carpenter's um, Vampires and John Carpenter's Las Martos. I thought they were really good. Um, the fact that they used bon- John Bon Jovi in um, the second one I thought was kind of interesting. Um, What's the second one called again? That was the last one. Last, Las uh, Martos. Las Martos, yeah. Yeah. And that's the one where they use John Bon Jovi. And um, I thought that was pretty neat. Um, like, there's certain there's certain elements that I like about certain horror films that kind of draws me in. Does it have a good plot? You know, do they are they using good, you know, actors? You know, does it have, like, elements like, like Dracula, for instance, like where I had spoken about, you know, the darkness and the beauty of it and the love story and all that jazz. All, yeah. all that jazz. And um, I look, I look for a lot of different things that I, you know, like um, Nightmare on Elm Street. I've seen every single film, even the even the remade ones. The remade ones, I don't particularly care for the remake of Nightmare on Elm Street, the first one. I You're talking New Nightmare, Wes Craven's New Nightmare. You don't care for that one? I don't care for that one, but I'm also talking about the remake of um, of uh, Nightmare on Elm Street where they used a different actor, the actor that they used in Watchmen as Rorschach. Um, I much prefer the classic Robert England. Um, I think he's the perfect Freddy. Nobody else can beat his acting. He is Freddy Krueger. Which, I don't, I'm going to stop you for right there, but before I even forget, for people who are listening to this who haven't heard, but I don't, Robert England actually, when he went and saw New Nightmare in theaters, he actually got up and left. But now, that is 2017, one thing I just want to say before you can continue on is, 
Robert England is actually coming back for one more film being at Freddy Cougar. I don't know if you guys heard about that or not, but yeah, I just thought I'd throw it out there that Robert England is coming back for one more film as Freddy Cougar. But you can go on now. Um, and then some other favorites of mine besides Nightmare on Elm Street and the Child's Play ones. I did like the Halloween ones. I would. I didn't particularly care about the Rob Zombie versions that he did, but um, I've seen a lot of Rob Zombie films too. Um, I've seen House of a Thousand Corpses. I thought that was pretty interesting with the whole Doctor Satan thing. And um, I still have yet to watch Lords of Salem. I'm willing to give it a go, despite what has happened to Halloween. Some people may disagree with us on this, but um, I prefer the John Carpenter versions of um, Halloween. I, d- I would choose that over Rob Zombie because to me, you do not want to understand Michael Myers and don't know what's inside his head and that's what makes it scary because it's just like, you don't know anything about this guy and he's like that big ass motherfucker that goes around and with a knife and just stab you. And you just then, yeah, you just pretty much wanna you know, look at Michael Myers and wonder what he's thinking about. You don't wanna actually know what's going on inside a killer's head. No. You know, that takes away like the element of surprise in my opinion. Yes. Um I'm trying to think so you mentioned child play have you seen all the Chunkies, and which one, I guess, would you say is your favorite? Um, yes, I've seen them all. Um, I did hear about the fact that there's going to be another one, The Cult of Chucky, which I'm super excited about. Which is actually being filmed right now as we speak. And, uh, and the lovely Miss Jennifer Tilly is involved in this one as well. Yep, and we do have a title for the new one, and it's called Cult of Chucky. Um, I believe they said they wanted to shoot for a fall release of this year, I think it was saying. I think that's what I think it was that saying. Was their, speaking of fall releases, okay, so, get ready. Friday the 13th. Alright, so, last movie of Friday the 13th we got was 2009 with the remake, which I thought was Amazeballs. Yes, I just said that. Amazeballs. Um... <laughs> I just like the atmosphere of it. The, the one thing that I even noticed is that they made Jason a little bit faster, which didn't really kill it, but it was just like, holy crap, like, he's moving faster now. Um, but anyway, to get to what I was saying, why I mentioned Friday the 13th is, for those of you that wondered and possibly already heard, which is a huge, huge letdown, is... They finally were going to film a new Friday the 13th, which was like Friday the 13th origin, which you actually were going to see the parents, Jason's parents, of how it all started. Um, what was really interesting is one day they said they were going to ca- start casting Jason's father, and then within 24 hours, they canned it. Paramount. Canned it. Canned it. The reason is, which I think I told you the reason why they canned it. Um, I believe you told me why. I think it had to do with um, certain other films, I think. It was because of the opening weekend of Rings. Because of Rings, with, you know, Rings, you know... Uh, watch your it's face coming out of you from the Samara TV. coming out of the yeah. television at you after you watch the videotape and you have seven days. You die, blah, blah, blah. You die yeah. blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so because of how bad Rain did in opening weekend, they decided to can Friday the 13th Origins and possibly World War Z 2, which from what I hear now... It's actually not technically can because I guess they might have found somebody else to take World War Two, or World War Z two. My bad. So if somebody, but for the but for our fellow uh, Jason Voorhees fanatics like my boyfriend, um, this is a huge letdown that the, the um, 
film has been stopped in its tracks. Who knows now when we're going to see another Friday the 13th. Yes, I know a lot of people say it needs to stay dead, but with the way they were going to go with this new one, I think it had potential. But they didn't really have, they didn't really do an origin story for Jason Voorhees, but like we had watched earlier, um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the beginning, did an origin story for Leatherface, showing us how Leatherface came to be. Showed us his mother, you know, how was he was... conceived inside the slaughterhouse. How he was abandoned, how he became, like, the sadistic maniac, all this stuff. All of these elements, and, and they did a movie for Leatherface, and... You know, I was actually excited about the fact that they were going to do a film of origins for Jason Voorhees because he is another one that I like. Which, I'm going to have to now look this up, though, but I um, I do remember, I want to say it was 2014, 2015, when I believe I heard talk about another Texas Chainsaw, but it wasn't going to be called Texas Chainsaw, it was going to just be called Weatherface. Did you hear anything about that? I think I, I did hear a little bit something about that through the grapevine, but I would probably look it up to confirm it. Well, I the reason why I'm saying Weatherface is because I want to say, and here we go with video games again, The Evil Within. Everybody, I, I don't know about you guys, but that should have been the, the next Resident Evil after Resident Evil 4. That was just pure awesome. I, I love Shinji Mikami's work. I just love how he directs horror games. And I really just wish he would keep going with that genre to help revive the genre because survival horror is becoming horrible. Um, But anyway, before I get really off track, but anyway, when I was playing The Evil Within, near the end, you're like in a subway station. And down one of the subway tunnels, there's actually a poster... And that, I believe, says Weatherface. It's an actual real poster because, you know, there's actually news about mm-hmm. a real movie called Weatherface. But I thought that was kind of ironic. Um, but, oh, speaking of survival horror and all that jazz, uh, we just got that new Resident Evil 7. Biohazard. Biohazard. That completely went on a new turn of Resident Evil franchise. It went from third person to first person. I know you just recently beat it, Tessa, and I just recently beat it a couple times, especially on Madhouse, but what is your opinion on Resident Evil 7? I think that they uh, changed it dramatically from the traditional Resident Evil. Um, there were some elements about it that I did like, but there were other elements that I didn't particularly care for. Um, I didn't like the fact that how how slow they made it for you to reload your gun and how how much faster they made the bosses. They didn't really give you enough time to reload in certain instances. Um, another thing I didn't like was the fact that, um, that how they changed Chris Redfield's character. That was probably one of my biggest peeves, was um, the traditional Chris Redfield that we're used to seeing in like examples like Resident Evil 5 and Resident Evil 6. He was the same person. He was the same character. You get into Resident Evil 7, they completely changed him over like facial like facially reconstructed his entire character like it's not even the same so that kind of threw me off the only indication uh, that it was chris redfield was when they said his name and then i was just like wow but we don't know really know for sure if it was chris redfield though we, for well, all we, for all we know they just said redfield to kind of be like oh but then they might, like, you know, they might call him, like, Mike Redfield instead of Chris or some shit. Because, you know. But we only know of the two Redfields. Chris and Claire Redfield, brother yeah. and sister. We don't know of, like, another Redfield. But I do understand where you're coming from, you know. Until we actually confirm it, I guess. But that would be my pet peeve if that were really the case and that were Chris. Um... Now, without spoiling the ending, how did you think of the way they um, 
they uh I think it was kind of clever it. how they did the bosses. Like how they um showed how they were infected and what it did to them and like how each boss was different like how they were uh, I guess um morphed and you know each had their own weakness now I know um sorry if you, if you were going to say something else but I, I just wanted to say point this out because you me and another friend of ours even said this, this one line, and I quote, are we playing fear? Yeah, I did kind of get that feel from it when um, we were playing uh, the games individually, like where you would sit and play and I would watch, or one of our buddies, we would do like a share play experience and we would watch our buddy play. But you did kind of get this like, you know, fear vibe, like... With, the, another, with, the, with another the great game until yeah. Fear 3 came out. Yeah, it was a great game. But, you know, the little girl in Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, she gives off this um, fear. Alma. Alma. Alma vibe from fear, like, uh, big time. Um, how she does her, you know, her uh, manifestations. Her yeah, yeah, her manifestations of how she shows up and how she disappears and fades in and fades out. It's definitely, it definitely gives off a uh, fear vibe. Okay, um, yeah, so another game that I want to mention to you, which um, I found to be another classic, is the very first Dead Space. I loved that game. That was really um, nerve-wracking, in my opinion, just because of the way they did it, especially on hard, because I played it first on hard, and holy crap. That plasma cutter helped me a lot. I loved it. Plasma cutter was a very handy tool. And Isaac was a tough individual to... Very resilient. To go through all that crap that he did. Um, Dead Space 3, however, I... I personally enjoyed the fact that it was co-op because not only was it co-op, but... Which you and I still need to play together because I have yet to play Dead Space 3. Yes, but in, and you're going to understand why what I'm about to say. You're going to be like, oh! But uh, we'll, we'll have your fill on Dead Space 2 because um, I believe you played some too. But anyway, Dead Space 3... I like the fact that it was co-op because you played as Isaac and your partner, which I'm having a brain fart on your partner's name right now, but um, I just like the fact that, like, on single player, you get these, um, uh, what do I want to say, this weird time where your partner would, like, see something. And like a vision. More or less. I, I, see, that's the thing. I, I don't know ESP. if it's really a vision. It's almost like if he's really seeing it kind of thing. So maybe like a hallucination in a way. But, like, you know, he, your partner will f- see it. And then I just like, hey, dude, dude, um, are you okay? Like, what did you just see? There's nothing there kind of thing. And then what I really like about it is that the only way you know the story of these hallucinations with the partner is if you play with another person. If you play single player, you cannot access your partner's stories without another player. Mm-hmm. And I won't lie, but I, I remember playing that the partner with another friend for the first time, and I'm just like, dude. Like, and this is real life. This isn't even in the game, but I'm just like, dude, do you see this fucking shit? And my friend thinks I'm going crazy now because he doesn't see what I'm seeing. And I just remember, like, this fucking nutcracker staring at me. Like, this big-ass nutcracker. And I'm like, dude, you don't see this nutcracker facing me right now. And he's like, dude, no. You're on crack or something. <laughs> yeah. So I actually like Dead Space 3 with that. But it didn't do well when I'm... Really sad about because the DLC that they had for Dead Space 3 was awesome. They brought in this new moon creature 
that would have been probably the start of a powerful game if they were to have gone that route with the moon creature. Which, if you've never played Dead Space 3, you, you probably have to play the DLC as well. But, I had fun with my Dead Spaces. I've uh, played every single one of them, including the uh, weird one there, Attraction or something like that. And then there's another mini game one. But, how about your take on Dead Space? Um, I'd have to say that probably my favorite Dead Space, like you said, was the first Dead Space. Um, I liked Isaac's character. Um, I thought he was very resilient with everything that he had to go through, um, all the monsters he had to face. Um, the plasma cutter would probably have to be my favorite, like, tool, I guess you could say. Um, I did play Dead Space 2 a little bit, but that was on PC. I wasn't able to get fully into it because, um, the game servers kept crashing when I was trying to play it. Which is an unfortunate thing that sometimes does happen when we are playing a video game, whether on PC or on system, there is a system crash or like an error or whatever. Anyways, um, but I do have to agree with Paul, uh, first Dead Space was good. It was by far the best Dead Space out of all of them, um, that I've been able to play. I'm actually um, looking forward to actually playing the others, the other two fully, all the way through. Um, I have quite a few um, horror games on my list that I have yet to play or to finish that I really need to uh, get done. Um, what are they? Um, well, I'm right now I'm working on my second playthrough of Resident Evil 7 Biohazard because I'm working on trying to get the collectibles and the Mr. Everywhere bobblehead thingies. Um, I'm also, um, considering doing a, a stream on Twitch for it for a friend of ours who is also, who also started, uh, streaming some of hers last night, and she ran into some hiccups and needed some help, so I told her that I would probably stream, uh, some for her on Twitch, um, so she Wait, can... Wait, by the way, if you're listening to this, and you know who we're talking about, Bree, uh, anyway, yeah, this is for you. Yeah. Um, she... Bree is, uh, she's an amazing female gamer. She's a great friend. Um, Very great streamer. She, I like how she interacts with her community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's, she's, uh, she's very interactive with uh, her community, as Paul says. Um, if you guys get a chance, I would go on Twitch and look up Bree, B-R-I 43-K. So B-R-I 43-K. And I promise you... She will stream just about anything, actually. She loves Outlast, though, which we'll get to in a minute. But, um, yeah, I would recommend her. Another great friend of ours is Sky High Gaming 28 which... He does a mix of everything as well, but he's more into, like, uh, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six. Um, he does more of, like... Th- like first person shooters. shooters. She's not really. He, I mean, he is not really. Um, really big into horror gaming. But until he, I came into his friendship, where I started suggesting, like, oh, hey, dude, like, like Seven Days to Die for seven instance. Seven Days to Die, um, which we're on like day fifty nine, and I'm still surprised. Surprised we're still alive, even. Um, but no, um, I actually since we already talked about it, but until dawn, I actually suggested that game to him and I remember watching him stream it and at the end of the uh, day when he finally beat the game he actually messaged me and he go dude I'm so glad you suggested this game this game was amazing and I had to agree I mean I don't know how much anybody's familiar with that game but that game had gone to hell and back for 10 years now that game had been changed so much. I don't know if you actually noticed, Tessa, but did you know that Until Dawn was originally supposed to be for PlayStation Move on the PS3 and first person? Mm-mm. No, I did not know that. Yep. 
So what you actually saw now is the redone version, as you can see It's now. a revision of it, yeah. Yeah, which, wow. Yeah, I was pretty impressed with the graphics and um, um, the playthrough myself. And the oh my god, I loved him. <laughs> um, I actually really enjoyed it, and um, the elements of the game were on point, uh, right down to the jump scares, um... You did have time, like timing commands, to where you had so much time to do something, and you had what to hit the you had to, you had to like mash the buttons correctly, and if you didn't do it just right, you would die, or or, or um, events would be altered. The game is based on you can either kill everybody off, or you can save them. It's um, really your story, or I should say your cinema, because it almost acts like a TV show or a movie, depending on how you look at it. I think when I did my playthrough, I think that I saved everybody but two people, I believe. Do you remember who you did not save? Um, I believe I didn't save, um, I think it was the, the blonde. Is that Ashley? That would be Ashley. I didn't save Ashley, and I didn't save Emily. I actually shot Emily in the head. Um, not not only because I thought that she might have been able to be infected by the Wendigo, which I learned you cannot well, be bitch, infected. Right? Yeah, she was a bitch. She yeah. had it coming. Yeah. Um, so I shot her in the head. So that was that was that was my fault. Oops. You know. Oops. But Ashley, that was that was more of an accident. I didn't do my mashup buttons and my timing. Pretty much like what you were saying. Yeah, and the events were altered, and she died. I wasn't able to get to her in time. So, so you're thinking if you actually mashed all the buttons gr- correctly, you think you would have gotten there in time? I think there there probably would have been like a fifty fifty chance I could have saved her. Now. When you were going for Ashley, did you do the shortcut or the long way? What were you doing? What would your, like... like um, I was doing the shortcuts, but where I screwed up was I, uh, I went, I was supposed to jump on a rock to jump across the creek or the river or whatever, and I actually missed the rock and fell into the river, and that was, that was my mistake. That's where... The events got altered because I made that one fatal mistake that cost Ashley her life. Which happened in a video game. Um, I do remember, I believe I actually saved Ashley, like, almost by a hair, though, because I think I, like, screwed up, like, I have one little part. Kind of like, I think when I was watching you, you screwed up because you fell into the water when you were doing the shortcut. Mm-hmm. Um... I had something similar, but it was later on. It was like a jump or something, but I somehow still managed to save her in time. Um, I'm, I honestly don't even remember who the hell uh, got killed when I first played anymore because I played that game so much. I love that game. Yeah, but Emily... She Emily, was, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. She I was, killed her when I could. Yeah, she was She was a bitch. I was, I was just waiting for her to either be killed off or to kill her myself. I was, I I was actually, waiting for when it. When I cause... went to go for my 100%, I actually hated the fact I had to keep her alive. I actually hated it. Well, I haven't gotten that far yet. I'm probably going to probably pick up Until Dawn and do another playthrough pretty soon, see if I can save everybody, but... Emily was one of those characters in Until Dawn that you you love to hate her. Like, it, she was... Yeah, just, it was definitely a love-hate relationship with her, but she had it coming, especially because of the shit uh, Emily and Mike were even talking about to, um, what was his name, Joss, I think, who was dating Emily at the time. Um... Kind of like the part where Ashley yeah, was where looking she, through the, the, um, the telescope, we're just going to say, because I can't think of the... They're, they're like the little, like, binocular things. Yeah, we'll just say binoculars. And, um, you know, Ashley stumbled upon Emily and Mike talking about their old relationship, blah, 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 and then Josh comes in, scared Ashley, and then you have the choice to either tell Josh or have him look or something like that, I forget but yeah, he gets pissed off when you uh, have Josh 
take a look at the binoculars and he sees them when we talking to Mike or actually kissed Mike for all that matters. Was it was it Josh or was it Mark? I forget the names, but anyways, yeah. You get the idea. Um but so who do you feel bad for, I guess? Well, since we're talking about until dawn, let's go into that a little bit. So who did you actually feel bad for? I actually felt bad that I didn't save Ashley. That was like my big thing was because, you know, yeah, she was a little she was a little annoying and stuff and, you know, she acted like a you know, a horny little schoolgirl or whatever, you know, but I I genuinely felt bad when, you know, she died. But um another one that I liked, um, what about Chris? I, I I actually my favorite character of Until Dawn, um, that I'm glad I actually was able to save her was Sam. Sam was my favorite. Um, I enjoyed playing her. She was she was a great character. Um, she also looks like an actress. Uh, I th- I think her name was like Hayden. Pinktier or Patentier or something like that. Anyways, um... Would you guys feel free to comment our mistake of names or whatever? This so is this is know. just like a... This is a rough podcast. Yeah. We're kind of We're experimenting. In we're experimenting because we want to try to do something different with hobbies. And this one, I like the idea of a podcast to where you can, um... Mention something and hopefully agree with others or disagree. It, it, it's just fun. Um, but is there anything else that um, really sparked an interest in the horror genre, whether it be video game movies? Oh, God, I could go on and on and on about horror genre movies. I could go on for hours about that. But, um... Like I like I said with with horror genre game, uh, video games, I'm still experimenting. Um, I haven't really played um, horror video games as much as I've obviously watched horror films. But um, I'm actually going to be getting into more horror games. Like um, one of the ones that you showed me, I was kind of interested in, in trying uh, was um, Layers of Fear. Um, you mind talking a little bit about that and what you liked about it? And I like the atmosphere of it. I like the uh, atmosphere of it. The story was um, interesting, too, because I haven't played it in a while, so I can't really remember everything. But I want to say you're playing at the daughter, if I remember correctly, um, because the DLC, I think, Portrayed as the son, I want to say. Portrays, yeah. You portrayed as the son, yes. Um, but anyway, no, I just like the uh, the weirdness of it. Like it weird... was, it was like eerie and ominous. It was a very ominous game. The the I I just can't get over the amount of twists and turns in the game, along with the graphics. Like I mean, I just remember walking down the hallway to like. You know, you just opened up a door walking down the hallway to a dead end, and then you turn around and it's like the whole goddamn house moved on you. It's like, what the hell? So Um, it is indeed a game that plays tricks on your mind. Yes. As well as your eyes. Yes. And the puzzles in it are interesting. The What you have to do to solve certain things, I did like the puzzles, which Silent Hill did a really good job with puzzles. I like... I just remember replaying Sound Hill 2 just the beginning alone because it was just so fun with the puzzles, especially with the uh, clock, the grandfather clock in Sound Hill 2. That was that was just fun. Um, but what was I going to say? Oh, Outlast. You were mentioning uh, to me you started that, but you never finished it. Yeah, I started out last. I never finished it. That's another game that I'm probably going to... Uh, that's actually on my list of games that I'm going to play through and um, finish. Um, I uh, First time ever that I actually seen game uh, game playthrough of Outlast, I thought, holy shit. Um, there, it's gory. Um, from what I saw, there's a lot of blood, it's gory, there's, there's jump scares, 
Um, you you can't um, you have to hide. You can't kill your enemies. Yeah, you don't have a combat. You basically there's no combat system. You have to run. You have to hide. You know you and if they catch you, they kill you. You know, game over. Which um, do you know anything about the DLC called Whistleblower? Did you hear anything about? I that heard one? about it, but I don't know a lot about it. I actually am going to research that. Um, but I wouldn't research it. I would actually wait till you actually get done with the main game before you go into the DLC. Well, I, obviously I'm going to do that, but what I'm saying is I don't really know a lot about Whistleblower because, like I like I said, I haven't really gotten a chance to play through Outlast, Outlast and beat it. But I do know that you do have to run and hide from your assailants. You can't fight them. There's no combat system. And... Um, I've seen people playing this game, they hide in lockers, they hide under beds, they hide wherever they can hide. Yeah, I played the main game and the DLC, and I know I'm not going to try to give away anything because you haven't played it yet, but I will say I loved Whistleblower. Like, I actually thought it was much more gorier than the main game itself. Huh. Yeah, if you can believe that. That's very interesting. Um, one other thing that... Doesn't really spoil anything, but I will say is, um, hopefully you don't have children with Eddie. And that's what I'm going to leave it as for you. Yeah. In the game, ooh, scary. Um, speaking of Outlast, uh, you and me actually sat down and played, uh, the demo for Outlast 2. Oh, yes, we Holy did. Holy crap. We actually made a YouTube video for that, um, where... Paul had made a video for it, and I uh, guest hosted, or whatever I guess you want to put it. Pretty much what she's doing right now. She she helped me talk about the game while I played it. And commented on it and such. We actually both played through the demo of Outlast 2, and I thought that was pretty interesting. It looks very promising. Um, and once again, they went through, they went to your private part. I don't know what it is about the private parts, but once again, goddamn private parts get mammered. They get mammered or chopped up into what tiny they pieces. Chopped up because like shovel to the crotch. It's yeah, just no fun. It's no bueno. I don't bueno. even a shovel. It would like a freaking mallet, uh, like a spiked mallet or something like that. Maybe like a size. I don't. I don't. I don't even remember it was, anymore. It, it was I don't know. It was something big and awful and, and nasty. Awful, and that's just the perfect way to end the demo. <laughs> Yeah, um, although there was one particular monster that I saw in the demo that I really just kept my eyes on, and I was very That's cautious around, and it was the tongue monster. It was the tongue monster with the multiple arms, I want to say. She had multiple extremities, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, like you're, you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. The tongue monster, yeah, she's, she's, uh, she looks Real nasty and uh, not somebody you want to play with. I know I don't want to play with her, but I was very cautious in the demo when I uh, was going around her and stuff. Wait, if you guys get a chance, and I don't know if you, if it's still even available to download, but if you guys do get a chance, I would recommend playing the demo for Outlast 2. Worth it. Um, Red and Evil 7 demo, I believe you can still get, because I don't think that. Those never really go away. Oh, speaking of speaking of the Resident Evil Seven uh, demo, um, what I liked about the demo for Resident Evil Seven was how they took like this little mini game, where in order for you to obtain the dirty coin that you end up carrying over into the main, the game. main game, is you have to find all of these. Dead, murder mysteries. All these murder right? mysteries that yeah. are children, I believe. All their children are really... children are their people or something like yeah. that. But there's various different murders, sca- murder mysteries scattered throughout the entire Baker family house, and you have to find them. It's kind of like a little riddle game per se. Like I thought it was pretty clever, and I liked it. And kind of like how you had to take the hatchet and. Um... You had to hit the, the uh, picture with the, I want to say woman with the, like, the cover over Yeah, her like head. a sheet over her head. Yeah. yeah, you had to do that. And you'd hear, like, this, this creepy-ass, like, giggle, like, of a child, which I thought, 
I thought that that little like mini game thing for the demo, I thought that was pretty neat. Like, oh, speaking of yeah, speaking of the demo too, but I know you when you played the demo too and the uh, game, the fucking ghost. In the uh, first video. Oh of the yes, demo. the ghost, the ghost girl that you would see um, on the ten, on nine the, or ten different areas. Ten, but, ten, ten different areas on the videotape where you could see this ghost girl. And if you guys can uh, hear the cat, that's our cat Merlin. He wants to say a few words. I think. What do you want to say, Merlin? No, you don't want to chat. No, okay. No. But yeah, you were saying, babe. Yeah, um, but that was a uh, like you had to like watch for her on the videotape. I know we played through it a couple of times where we were actually really, really looking for her and see where she would pop up because there were ten different locations where she could pop up, and there were times where she just didn't show up at all, and we were just kind of like, okay, did we do something wrong? You know, do we need to go back and play it again? You know, blah blah so blah blah. So we blah, blah. that up about this ghost girl on the tape, which she's people, actually one of the victims. In she's the one of the mystery. victim, but if you don't see her in the tape, you need to keep playing until you see her because that um, triggered one of the murders. Because, uh, which, like we, she was saying before, uh, which involved. Murders of children, which I believe she was a child. Because there's a door up in the attic that you have to you have to solve all the murder mysteries to unlock it to obtain the dirty coin. Yes. But uh, since we're getting on almost time to end the podcast here on our hour podcast, um, is there anything else we should really like go dive into real quick? Oh, I don't know why I haven't mentioned it yet, but alien. Aliens! That's right. I freaking love the Alien series. 1979 and Aliens are probably... Um, well, just go with this. 1979 Alien is a goddamn masterpiece. So Wyden, the way Ridley Scott did the atmosphere, the visions, and everything is just freaking amazing. And then not only that, but you got the practical effect of a guy actually wearing an alien, alien suit. Going around, chomping on people's faces. Yeah, pretty much taking a little, the little mouth of the alien and essentially, pardon my French, skull fucking. Skull fucking, yeah. Um, what was I going to say to you? Uh, I'm surprised you haven't mentioned the Friday the 13th video game. Well, I was going to save that for another time, but oh, yeah. We can, but cover, we, can, no, we can cover that another time. We'll yeah, um, that. for those of you that may have not heard or have heard, yes, there was a Kickstarter that um, asked for $700,000 to make a video game of Friday the 13th, which I will get to another time because that almost falls through with the whole... Friday the 13th origin movie that we talked about earlier being canned. So, but like I said, this is our first podcast. We just wanted to... Experiment and get a feel for it. And pretty much do a quick introduction. Um, We just hope we can do more in the other episode. But till then, I'm Paul. And I'm Tessa. And this is Everything Horror.